Hey, what's up all you beautiful sweaty people? I just saw the movie Logan and I hope you have too because I'm about to talk all about it. First off, I want to say that this is not just an exceptional comic book movie, but this is a movie that uses imagination and ingenuity to show what is possible to do on the big screen with original storytelling. So let me tell you what I mean. Check this out. We have, in our world, the real world, comic books, and we have movies that are based on these X-Men comic books. And then on top of that, we have a Logan movie that discovers that there are X-Men comic books that exist within the X-Men movies and that the characters, the minor characters, believe that the X-Men are the same heroes that we, the viewer of the movie and the readers of the books, believe they are. They double down on this weird double play and it constantly does this chicken and egg swapping where you don't know what came first and what's based on which source material or perception of it. It's just very tricky and weird. I, I commend them for it. So going further down the rabbit hole, this particular incarnation of the X-Men universe is based on the graphic novel Old Man Logan, which is not necessarily in sync with the rest of the Marvel and X-Men canon. It borrows from previous storytelling but is not tied down to it. Similarly, the Logan movie uses Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman, who we've seen play these characters for nearly two decades, but the Logan movie, which is based on the Old Man Logan graphic novel, is not necessarily tied down to the other movies, and in doing so, they're able to take characters that we are already attached to and do whatever they want with them, which was what made the movie so good. Similarly, the comic books that end up playing such a big role in the Logan movie could very well be based on all the other X-Men movies that we, the viewer, have watched for the last 20 years. It's a head-scratcher. So technically, both the movie and the source material that the movie is based on are both professional-grade pieces of fan fiction that go off the grid and allows the storytellers to write fresh material without being tied down to the strict reality that has been cemented for the last 70 years of comic book publications done by Marvel. Getting past all the meta qualities of this film, we still actually have a lot of meat on the bone, which is what makes it good after the fact. This is a movie with excellent dynamics between characters that span three generations. We have Professor X, Wolverine, and X-23. And this isn't a movie where anything that can go wrong absolutely does, and the characters are constantly reacting to it. We have uh, world-class actors, Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman, and then a young talent, she's maybe 10 years old, and she's heading emotional registers that professional working adult actors struggle to hit. So I, I applaud all three of them, and the writers and directors, anybody who took place in this bravo. So as we get into the movie, Wolverine is at the end of his rope with both the amount of emotional trauma and physical trauma that his body can take. He's sick and he's being poisoned and he's already dealing with more responsibility than he can probably handle given his state when all of a sudden something even bigger falls in his lap and now he has to deal with it. When X-23 shows up, his wounds not healing, his depression, his rotting insides, his alcohol dependency, and his responsibility towards Professor X, they don't go away. He still has all this baggage, but now he has a cloned daughter, I don't know, laboratory grown, th this girl who he can see and touch and can relate to, he knows is his daughter, he has to get her to safety despite all his own problems. This is his new purpose. This is a man who was broken and lost without the purpose that he once had when he was part of a team. And now this is his one chance to redeem himself and give his own blood a, a better chance, a, a chance that he never got. Towards the end of the film, we discover that Wolverine has to take on a younger, healthier, more focused, less emotionally attached clone of himself that is 
actually a perfect mirror for the struggle that he's going through. He can no longer be the younger version that he once was, and at the same time, he's more calm and he's more caring, and that keeps him from being as violent as this younger clone that is so terrifying. And he actually is terrified of the clone because he knows better than anyone just how dangerous a full-on rage mode Wolverine at his peak condition can be. But in the end, it's the life of his daughter and about 15 of her friends' children's lives that are on the line that he has to save. And you know Wolverine is going to step up to the challenge. And ultimately, he loses his life fighting this younger version of himself to save his own daughter. It's a weird poetic justice thing that they did. It was well done. And everyone in the theater was crying when that happened. I shit you not. It was quiet, people, <laughs> you could hear it. So actually, the most surreal and unclear part of the movie is essentially the core plot, because they're on a journey to get to a destination that they found in a comic book, and you don't really know if they got the idea from the comic book, or if the comic book is based on something that happened in the movie world that we didn't see, but we do know that at the end of the movie, the children are safe, they complete their journey, and whether they make it to Eden and Eden exists, we don't really know. We just hear that Eden is a safe place for mutants, and does it exist? Is it based on something that is there? Is it just made up in comic books? We don't know. The background plot was also made very vague. We know from reading the Old Man Logan graphic novel that something terrible happened that wiped out most of the superheroes. And in the Logan movie, it's alluded that Professor X did something terrible that may have resulted in the death of many mutants. Uh, presumably he gave a giant brain freeze somewhere on the East Coast, and then Transigen reacted by rounding up and killing mutants. I would actually like to see a Logan prequel showing what happened, but uh, we heard from both Mr. Jackman and Mr. Stewart that they will not be reprising their roles, so unlikely that we'll see that movie, but I'd love to. All in all, I thought Logan was not just an incredibly entertaining action-adventure science fiction western movie, it was also an incredibly grounded and emotional piece of cinema. I hope the executives at Fox give themselves a big pat on the back, and I hope the other movie studio execs are taking notes, because this movie did what said can't be done, which is break the mold, and you gotta take those risks if you wanna do well. I'm David, peace out, like and subscribe, leave a comment, have a good one, later. Hey, I just want to add one more thing. As someone who's adopted, I thought it was pretty cool that Logan was kind of a story about adoption. I know DC put out Man of Steel, which was kind of about adoption, definitely about adoption. And I hope to see more films just like that. Peace.